Let's bless the Lord. Come on, somebody. Praise the Lord in the house. God is in the house. Come on, lift your hands and bless him. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy. God is worthy to be praised. It's Father's Day. Father's listen, you should be praising him. It's all right. You, you got quiet. I, um, I'm standing here uh, this afternoon to do something. Now, we have a uh, guest uh, speaker, and um, I, I know sometimes as guest speakers, they don't like us to read their. Um, the bio is it biography? To be too long for me to be a biography, but I think I'll uh, thank you, the profile. Thank you for that. That's a more um, a short word to tell us that you are who you are. Um, so I I'm standing here to read uh, something about our. He said he's pastor Richard Notice. Um, he is a bishop, so. Um, we also give him that um, honor. Um, I'm sure when he comes up here, we will make a relevant introduction as to his um, entourage. I, I know it's not, um, it's not his uh, bodyguard or his uh, armor bearers, um, but I believe, I believe that God has placed a word in his heart for us as a church um, this afternoon. And, um, I'm going to read this first before I invite you here, sir. Uh, but let me say, welcome to Clapton, uh, the Testament of God, today. Pastor Richard Lotus is a native of Jamaica, where he attended Bethel Bible College and earned his diploma and bachelor's degree in theology. He is of a deepest spiritual background and with the call of God on his life. He entered uh, ministry at a very young age. In July of 1990, he received his first pastoral appointment at the Salt Spring New Testament Church of God in Mountain Bay, Jamaica, where he served for 10 and a half years. In 1992, he married Erica, a registered nurse and also an ordained minister. The union produced two beautiful children, Richard, who is a licensed minister and a student at the university, and Aaliyah, who is in uh, the eighth grade. In 2004, the Notice family migrated to the US when Pastor Notice accepted the role of lead pastor of art at the Stanford Church of God in Connecticut. The name was later changed to Greater Works Community Church of God. During this time, he served on the Southern New England State Board and as a director for the calling and ministry studies. In other words, guys, those of you are doing the campus ministry program. He has preached all over the United States, the Caribbean island, and England. Pastor Richard Gold has founded Fresh Oil Ministries, Church of God, in Orlando, Florida, on September 1st, 2011, and is present as the lead pastor. Fresh Oil Ministries has approximately 350 plus members and continues to grow daily. Pastor Notice is an ordained bishop and has training in chaplaincy. He currently serves as an examining board. He currently serves on the examining board for the Central Florida region among the general board of education for the Church of God. Pastor Notice received his master's degree in church ministries at Pentecostal Theological Seminary in May 2014. He strongly believes that the greatest miracle in this is the saving of a soul. Could you join me here, please, sir? <laughs> Let me take this opportunity and say welcome. Can I just ask, could you come and stand here with me, Brother Trevor? We want you to preach the word. We're not afraid. We, we like the word here. However, God, whatever God has given to you today, give it to us. Undiluted. We like it that way. Even if we dilute it afterwards, but you give it to us undiluted. I'm going to ask Brother Trevor just to pray. Sure, pray for our. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your servant, Lord, who is available 
yourself to you today. We thank you for the word that you have given to him. We pray right now, Father God, that you are anointed with good on him, that he would preach that word, Father God, with confidence, with boldness. Father, may we be receptive to that word, not only hear us, but do us of that word. So we commend him now to the power of your grace, and we say thank you, in Jesus' name. Praise God. It is a joy to be in the house of the Lord and to greet God's wonderful people. Amen? Amen. I want to first thank your pastor and his charming wife for this great opportunity to minister the word in this church for the very first time. It is a joy and it is a privilege. And again, I am grateful, sir, madam, for this privilege of preaching the word. I am a Christian and I'm very proud to be one. Amen. Amen. I am a Christian and I'm very proud to be a child of God. I want to introduce to the church my family, my brothers or brothers-in-law, they are here, and I'm grateful that they have accompanied me to be here. I'm going to ask the, the I was going to say the most handsome one, but I, uh, if, if I call one handsome or who is first or last, it could be a problem. So I'm going to ask my, my two brothers to stand. Amen. They are my in-laws, my, my, my sister, my wife, I should say, is, is very happy that they are taking good care of me, and I'm grateful. And my, I'm going to call her my sister-in-law, I'm going to ask her to stand. Amen. And she too is a wonderful woman, and I'm great, just grateful for the three weeks that I'm here, that they have taken good care of me, particularly Roy, who is the who, who makes sure that I'm okay and I'm doing the weekend with these two. So I'm, I'm, I'm good. Amen? You may be seated. Praise God. But I want to bring you greetings quickly from Fresh Oil Ministries, Church of God, my wife, and the entire congregation. I'm not sure how pleased they are that have not, will not be at the Father's Day service. But the church is of age and can manage without a little short pastor. So I'm grateful that I'm here and they, they send their love and their greetings. But again, I join with all the sisters here and the children to wish all the fathers in the house a happy Father's Day. And I think the men should be proud of yourselves that you are called a father. So all the men in the house say, yeah. Amen. 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 Praise God. <laughs> I believe I have a word to share with the church. And again, Pastor Bishop, congratulations to you on your first year of pastoring this church. The fact that I see so many people here it is a sign that you're doing very well. And we give God the glory and the praise. Turn with me please to Exodus chapter 2. And I want you to stay with verses 1 to 10. But I would love to just read for now one verse. But it is, it is Exodus chapter 2, 1 to 10. Reading from the American Standard Version, it says, And the child grew, verse 10 of Exodus 2, And the child grew, and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son, and she called his name Moses, and said, because I drew him out of the water. Amen. Lord, I thank you one more time 
for this opportunity to share in the Church of God, the New Testament Church of God. Thank you for the elder who prayed for me. And I believe in his prayer. And I pray now that you will have your own way. In the name of Christ. Amen. I would like to share this afternoon for the time allotted for preaching. And for those who are viewing on Facebook, we we give greetings to them also. But I would like to share on the theme, God's people are qualified for a turnaround. God's people are qualified for a turnaround. On this Father's Day, I must truly declare that life can hold us under a siege if we allow our past, present, or tomorrow's negative conditions or events to hold us back. I believe also that we are capable of living life to its fullest if and only if we can talk into the secrets of doing so. For many fathers, life can be seen as a roller coaster. If you are not prepared for the ride, it will make you sick or become afraid. If we do not plan our lives purposefully and prayerfully, then it will not be possible to steer it in the right direction. I believe this afternoon as I stand behind this sacred podium that God's people are here, are qualified for a turnaround. If your life is going in the wrong direction, it means you are in need of a turnaround. Your life needs a shift. We look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, your life needs a shift. I will work today for persons whose lives are heading in the wrong direction. God wants to turn your life around. God wants to move in your life again. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not unto your own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct thy path. God wants to turn your life around. But to be qualified for a life changing turnaround, we must define first. What a turnaround is. There are two definitions that I would like to look at. One, an abrupt or unexpected change, especially one that results in a favorable situation. The next is the process of completing or the time needed to complete a task, especially. Receiving something, processing it, and sending it out. But I would love to draw more to the first definition. An abrupt or an unexpected change. Especially one that results in a more favorable situation. I want to tell the church today that I would like to use the life of Moses as a perfect model to teach the church, to preach to this congregation that we are all qualified for a life-changing turnaround. The roller coaster life of Moses, we must talk about. He was placed on a river line at a very early age 
guys who are operating the sound, if you give that little monitor up here, and they're happy pastor. Little monitor up here. So first of all, church of God, to be qualified for a turnaround, it's important for you to know one, that one's life situation qualifies God's people for a turnaround. One's life situation qualifies God's people for a turnaround. The life of Moses started out very complicated. Oh, very complicated it was. Innocent child. His mother was running from Pharaoh's wrath and judgment. Because the Egyptians were
means we are ready for the turning in our lives. So your life situation should not, should not stop you from getting a turnaround. It should help you. Your poor decision uh, should help you to make a turnaround. Especially if you have admitted you have error. But the third thing, church, stay with me. Don't sleep on it. A spirit of contrition. And he said, who made thee a prince or a judge over us? Intendest thou to kill me? Hast thou killed the Egyptian? And you know what the Bible says? And Moses feared and said, surely this thing is known. Now probably you are wondering where in this there is sorrow. The fact that Moses is declared Moses. 
Say it with God. Say it with God.
how to take care of sheep. Yes. Yes. Amen. God had to use it to take care of some animals that were unruly. Yeah. Yeah. Pastor, we ever seen some people want a big church. Yes. Yes. And can't even rule their household.
spirits came in scripture. Take off your shoes, Moses. Because the place you are standing on, I made it. I founded the earth. I created it. And you're coming in my presence. I want you to take off thy shoes from off thy feet. God was about to promote Moses into going back to Egypt. But God said, I want you to understand that I want you to strip you down where I can meet with you. You have been, you have, you have got well, you are well educated in the things of Egypt. Now it's my time to talk to you. I want you to go as I'm about to send you. I'm going to give you the instructions. But first, be qualified. Yes. God revealed himself to Moses. God warned him and he answered the warning. The final point is our limitations prepare us for a turnaround. I want the church to stand right here as I preach to you for one minute. Stand, please. Our limitations prepare us for a turnaround. Exodus 4 verse 10, and Moses said unto the Lord, O my Lord, I am not eloquent. Neither thereto or heretofore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant. For I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. I want to say to the men here, you might be confessing like Moses that you are limited. It's a good thing. But do not allow your limitation to stop you from getting a turnaround. In fact, your limitation should expose you now for the turnaround. Because you are limited, because you cannot do things on your own, you have to plug into God. The sustainer of your life. And say, God, whatever I can say, teach me. Should allow you to do something like this. Turn around in a different direction. I don't understand how small the altar is. But if 20 people that you believe here right now that God is declaring in your life that this message came for you, that lately you have been having dreams and problems in your lives and you're seeing negative things and you yet believe that this sermon is to help you from the word of the Lord to get that turn with your pastor's permission I ask you now to come on along to pray with you in brief do we have 20 people who you today you want to turn around and this is the way the Lord wants me to do the other I am not calling everybody, but I'm asking for 20 people that you want to turn around your life. Hallelujah. You want to turn around. You really want to turn around. You really feel that this is it. You have tried many things, and many things they have all failed. But God is positioning you for that turnaround. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can the worshipers worship with me? Hallelujah. 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 Only you bow your heads. Only you bow your heads. Hallelujah. 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 A door has been closed on somebody on the side. But I want to show you right now that the shutter 
the one who shut that door on you. God is taking that individual out of the way.
you were there. I just have this reluctance to leave this moment. This reluctance to just to, as it were, terminate what God is doing. Can you feel that real, nice, sweet, calm? The presence of God is so much in this place. Oh, hallelujah. I just feel this reluctance just to, not to want to go anywhere, just to stay here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for the way you've spoken to us today. Thank you for the way you've ministered to us today. Father, I am not leaving this place the same I came in. Father, I am not leaving here with the same intentions I had when I came in. I am not coming here and leaving all unchanged.